The computer market got off to a rough start in 2023, with PC shipments being down about 30%, but Apple has been hit particularly hard, with Mac shipments down about 40% in the first quarter of 2023. During the pandemic, Apple released their much anticipated first generation of Apple Silicon. So these are essentially processors that Apple has designed for their computers instead of just grabbing off the shelf Intel processors. And this was a hugely anticipated event, especially by me and other Mac users. We all held off from upgrading our Macs for as long as possible. So as soon as the Apple Silicon Macs were released, we can go ahead and buy those. The M1 chip that can be found in the MacBook Air was hugely improved over the previous Intel processors, with Apple claiming it being 3.5 times as fast as the equivalent Intel processor. And I can vouch for that, the M1 chip in this laptop is insanely fast. Going forward, it looks like the improvements in the Apple chips is going to be more incremental, and there's going to be less reason for people who already own an M1 laptop to feel the need to upgrade. And a huge competitor to the new M2 Max is going to be the widespread availability of reasonably affordable M1 Max in good condition. So in this video, I'll give you a full overview of how my M1 MacBook Air holds up in 2023, and you can decide whether or not you want to go ahead and buy one. So I think that the first thing to start off with is price. In the UK, you can pick up a base M1 MacBook Air from Apple for a thousand pounds. And if I'm being honest, I wouldn't recommend you going and buying one for a thousand pounds. I think there are real bargains to be had when you look at picking up a used M1 MacBook Air with warranty. I'm a big fan of buying used, you can save a ton of money. On eBay, you can get a pretty good condition M1 MacBook Air with 12 months of warranty for 600 quid, and you can get a great condition M1 MacBook Air with warranty for about 700 quid. And this is really good value for money. I don't think you're gonna be able to find any laptop at this price point with the same build quality and performance as the M1 MacBook Air. So next up is the hardware. The MacBook Air that I've got here is the base M1 MacBook Air, meaning that it has the eight core CPU and the seven core GPU with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes SSD. One of the biggest downsizes here is that it is not user upgradable. So whatever you buy is what you get forever. So I am not able to upgrade the RAM or the SSD. And 256 gigabytes isn't that much storage. So I pretty much always run an external hard drive when using my MacBook. It's not ideal, but it's a much cheaper solution than getting more storage from Apple. So I've had this for two and a half years and been chucking it in a backpack and taking it around with me everywhere I go. And it still looks really good. And it does just feel like fantastic quality. I was a little bit concerned about the keyboard when I first bought this M1 MacBook Air because previous generations of Apple keyboards have been just riddled with faults. Over the past two and a half years, I've not had a single thing go wrong with this keyboard and it works fantastically and is really good to type on. Probably my only complaint when it comes to the M1 Air is it does look a little bit outdated. I think that a lot of the competitors and even the newer Macs do have smaller bezels around the display, which I would appreciate. It looks pretty similar to the MacBook Airs that Apple has been releasing for many years. But with that being said, it's still really good quality materials and the physical design of this does look and feel great. So moving on to performance. The performance of the M1 MacBook Air is absolutely awesome and is a huge improvement over the Intel processor. My partner has one of the latest Intel MacBook Airs and honestly it feels so slow and it gets so hot even just doing like really basic stuff like browsing the internet. So the M1 Air is a huge improvement over the Intel chip. For your standard productivity applications like word processing, Excel and web usage, this will fly through all of those tasks. So this Mac got me through my final year of university. I did all of my coursework and all of my revision prep on this laptop, and I didn't have any issues when it comes to performance. I'd have like 50 PDFs open, Excel documents, Word documents, and PowerPoints open all at the same time, and this laptop wouldn't struggle at all. I'd actually go as far to say the performance on this laptop has improved over the time that I've owned it. 
So when this first came out, not many applications were actually designed to run on Apple Silicon. So now that it's been two and a half years, more and more applications are made to run on this Apple processor and performance has definitely improved over the time that I've owned it. Photo editing, programming and video editing is all definitely possible on this laptop. I do all of the editing for the videos on this channel on my base M1 Air and this is all shot in 4K on a reasonably okay camera. So the file sizes are quite large and I tend to add like a little bit of color grading and some transitions and some overlays etc. And yeah, I can make this laptop struggle when I've got like a really big long video that I'm working on. But at a hobbyist level, this laptop will do really well for video editing and photo editing. If you're a professional, then I think you should really stay clear of this laptop. But if you're at a hobbyist level like I am, it does the job nicely. I haven't tried gaming on this laptop. It's not what this Mac is made for. It doesn't have a fan inside, so it can't cool the processor down if it gets hot, etc. When I released my original M1 Air review, I played a little bit of Fortnite and it ran fine although it did get very warm. So if you wanna play games, I would stay clear from this. The purpose of this laptop really is productivity tasks. So it will be perfect for university or work and it can handle things like video editing and Photoshop, but maybe not at that sort of top tier professional level. I think that for the money, this is some of the best performance to money ratio that you're gonna be able to find from a laptop, especially at this price point. So for 600 quid, I do think it is really good value for the performance that you're getting. Moving on to the battery, I've done 340 cycles on this laptop and my battery health is at 87%, which I think is pretty decent. Apple claims that you should be able to expect about 11 hours of battery life on the M1 Air. I was a little bit disappointed with the battery life when I first got this because I didn't really come near that 11 hour mark. I typically get about six hours of usage before needing to plug it in. It's still pretty good, like you're not gonna need to take a charger with you if you're going to a coffee shop to do some work for a few hours or if you're going to the library or anything like that. So six or seven hours is still pretty good battery life. But your mileage is definitely going to vary if i'm editing one of these videos and i've got tons of sort of apps open as well in the background i can smash through the battery in like two hours so battery life is really going to depend on what you're doing if you've just got a word document open and you're typing away you might be able to get a little bit closer to the claimed 11 hours that apple has promised so to conclude i think that the m1 macbook air is great value in 2023 and will serve you well as long as your expectations are realistic. And the reason why I'm trying to emphasize that is I met a guy recently and he bought one of the M1 Pros to do all of his video editing on and it wasn't up to the task. And it isn't something for professional video editing, but if you're buying an M1 MacBook Air for productivity tasks and also sort of video editing or photography at a hobbyist level like I am, it is gonna serve you really well. And I'm sure it's gonna be good for many years to come. The M1 chip has just got so good that I feel like I'll be able to hold onto my laptop for many more years to come easily without feeling the need to upgrade. So I think in 2023, it's a great time to buy a used M1 Mac. However, I would probably steer you away from buying a brand new one from Apple, just because, and especially in the UK, they are very expensive and there are some bargains to be made if you do get a used one. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks very much.